Let's now take a look at matrices in more detail. So we talked about how matrices are essentially just tables of information in math. So for example, if you have two soccer teams who need to purchase new equipment, team A needs 15 balls, three goals, 16 jerseys. Team B needs 12 balls, five goals, and 18 jerseys. We can organize this information into a table. So in the table here, we have team A, the amount of balls that they need is 15, and the amount of goals that they need are three, and the amount of jerseys that they need is 16. And team B needs 12 balls, five goals, and 18 jerseys. And so this is actually a matrix because we're putting this into a table format and we can write it as such. So we'll call this matrix matrix A, and that's often how we name matrices with capital letters. And so this first column here will be team A, and we just go down the line and put the information in. So we have 15 balls, three goals, and 16 jerseys. And then the next column will be column B or team B, and we go down the line, put the information in 12 balls, five goals, and 18 jerseys. And so the columns represent the teams and the rows represent the items that they need. So this is for balls, this is for goals, and then for jerseys. And going across, we call this, you know, from 15 and 12, that's a row. Three and five is a row. So going across is a row. And then going from top down, so 15, 3, 16, 12, 5, 18. This is what you call a column. And so this matrix has three rows and two columns. So we say that the size, or oftentimes we'll call this the dimension of the matrix is a three by two. So it's rows by columns. Then we can do a lot of operations with matrices. The first operation that's always the nicest to look at is addition or adding. And then we can also look at subtracting because subtracting is essentially adding with negative numbers. And with adding and subtracting matrices, we can only add and subtract matrices with the same dimensions. Because in order to add and subtract, all we do is just add and subtract component wise. So the first row and first column entry, so that very first like one spot entry is negative two on the first one. And the first row, first column on the second matrix is negative four. So we just add the negative two with the negative four. So just component wise. And we have to check to see, make sure that the dimensions match up. This is a three by three because three rows, three columns. This is also a three by three. So that's good, the dimensions match up, we can do that. And so this is equal to negative two plus negative four is negative six, zero plus six is six, four plus zero is four. So that'd be the first row. And then the second row, three plus negative 15 is negative 12, negative 10 plus two is negative eight, 12 plus negative four is eight, so that's the second row. The third row is three plus six is nine. Negative two plus seven is five. Negative two plus one is negative one. So this is the result or the sum of these two matrices. Now let's go over to the right here and we're doing subtraction. So this is a two by three, two rows, three columns. This is also two by three, so that's good. We can add or in this case, subtract these two. And it's just like addition, but you're just subtracting component wise. So three minus four is negative one. Negative four minus six is negative 10. Seven minus eight is negative one. That's the first row. And then the second row, zero minus zero is zero. Two minus two is zero. Five minus four is one. And then going to the bottom left here, this is a two by three, two rows, three columns. And this one is a three by three. Well, notice here that the number of rows are different, the two and the three. So because they're different dimensions, we cannot add these two matrices together. So we say that this sum does not exist. 
And on this last one here, this is a two by two minus a two by two. And this is equal to, because we can subtract these dimensions match up. And we do two minus negative four. So that's two plus four, which is six. And we do negative 18 minus two, which is negative 20. 20 minus negative five, which is plus five is 25. Negative five minus one is negative six. So there are actually more than one way to multiply matrices. The first way of multiplying matrices is by a real number. If you just multiply a matrix by a number, we generally call that number a scalar. And it's sort of like distributing. You just take the number out front. For example, on this first one, you have negative two, and you just multiply each of the terms or each of the entries in the matrix by that scalar out front. So we're doing negative two times seven, negative two times negative one, and negative two times zero. So you're just multiplying all this. And just so we always have practice identifying the size or dimension of the matrix, this is a one by three. It's actually a new dimension that we haven't seen. And so the result here is going to be a one by three. And notice when we were writing out the sums, we had a three by three plus a three by three results in a three by three. And so when adding and subtracting, the dimension is always the same. And the same thing with scalar multiplication. If we do scalar multiplication, we're going to get a matrix of the same dimension. So negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. Negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. Negative 2 times 0 is 0. And so the result here is another 1 by 3. And then the next one here, we're multiplying by 4. So multiply each of the entries by 4. This is a 2 by 2. And the result should be a 2 by 2. Let's see. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 4 is 16, 4 times negative 5 is negative 20, and yes indeed, this is another 2 by 2. And then just do one more for good measure, this is a 2 by 3, and we're multiplying negative 5 to each of the components. Negative 5 times 1 is negative 5, negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, negative 5 times negative 3 is positive 15, Negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. Negative 5 times 6 is negative 30. And yes, this is a 2 by 3. And so we can actually combine this scalar multiplication with addition or subtraction. So let's say we have these two matrices here, A and B, and we want to do negative 3A plus 1 half B. Well, let's write out what negative 3A is. So negative 3A Take a and multiply each of the entries by negative 3. So this is negative 15, negative 6, positive 18, and negative 9. And we're adding that with 1 half of b. So we multiply all the entries of b by 1 half. So negative 4 times 1 half is negative 2. 1 half times 0 is 0. 1 half times 8 is 4. 1 half times 10 is 5. Now add component-wise these entries, and yes, these are both two by twos, so the result should be a two by two, and we're allowed to do this addition. This is equal to negative 15 plus negative two is negative 17. Negative six plus zero is negative six. 18 plus four is 22. Negative nine plus five is negative four. So now I said there were two ways of multiplying matrices. The first one was scalar multiplication, which we just looked at. The other one naturally is multiplying two matrices together. But we don't do it component-wise like addition or subtraction. Instead, what we do is we multiply the rows of the first matrix to the columns of the second. Which, in order to do that, we need the number of columns of the first to match the number of rows of the second. So what this looks like is if we have an M by N and we're multiplying it with in n by, say, r, we need the n's to match up. So we need those two dimensions, the columns and the rows, to match up right here of the first and second, respectively. And the result, believe it or not, is going to be in m by r. So for example, take a look at this first set here. So this is a 2 by 2, and this other one here is a 2 by Three. And so we look at the inner dimensions, the columns of the first, which is two, and the rows of the second, which are two, and they match up. So that's good. That means we can do this multiplication. And so what we do is we multiply 
row with column. So in order to get the entry in the first row, first column, you take the first row of the first matrix and multiply it with the first column of the second matrix. And we add together, so we multiply those component wise. So we do two, so first part of that first row times three, the first part of that first column. So in this matrix here, in the first entry, we're doing two times three, two times three, plus we're adding this with now the second entry in the first row, negative one times the second entry in the first column, five. So we're doing negative one times five. And this right here is the first entry of the matrix. So we, we would have to do this calculation out to get the first row, first column entry. And we're going to do this down the line. So to get the first row, second entry, do first row times second column. So to do first row, second column entry, you do first row times second column. So we are doing two times negative nine plus negative one times seven. And that's the entry in the first row, second column. And then the first row, third column, you're doing the first row of the first matrix times the third column of the second matrix. So two times two plus negative one times negative six. And so this is the first row. We have these three entries. Now let's do the second row. We're doing second row, which is the row three, four times the first column to get that second row, first column entry. Three times three plus four times negative six. And then second row, second column, you do second row of the first matrix times the second column of the second matrix. So three times negative nine plus four times seven. And to get the last entry in row two, column three, we take the row three, four, and multiply it with the column two, negative six. So we do three times two plus four times negative six. And now we just have to simplify or calculate each of these entry values. So in the first one, this comes out to two times three is six plus negative one times five is negative five is one. And then two times negative nine is negative 18 plus negative one times seven is negative seven. So that's negative 25. And then two times two is four plus negative one times negative six is positive six, so 10. And then in the second row, we have three times three is nine plus four times correction, this should be five which four times five is 20. So nine plus 20 is 29. Three times negative nine is negative 27 plus four times seven is 28. So this is one. And then the last one is three times two is six plus four times negative six is negative 24. So it, negative 18. So you can see it's, it's kind of a long process to do this multiplication between matrices because we have to do rows times columns. So it's a lot of products and sums that we're doing together. But this is the result here of the matrix multiplication. Now let's see what happens when we flip the order. So we did this two by two times the two by three. Now let's see what happens when we do the two by three times the two by two. So we have to make sure those inner dimensions match the number of columns in the first one matches the number of rows in the second one and it doesn't match here so these are invalid dimensions so you say that this product does not exist so what happened here is when we flipped the order in which we multiply we got different solutions or different results out one of them is undefined and so what this means is that the order that we multiply matrices does matter Unlike where in real numbers, if you do two times three, that's the same as three times two. This property that we're looking at is called the commutative property, which means the order that you multiply does or does not matter. Here with matrices, it does matter the order you multiply. So what that means is we say matrix multiplication is not commutative. Now let's see another example, a little bit nicer. So this is a two by two. This is also a two by two. So they're both square matrices of the same dimension. 
and the inner dimensions here match up. So that's good. We can go ahead and do this. And remember, we multiply row with column. So this is equal to, we do one times four is four plus zero times negative two is zero. And then the next one is one times negative three is negative three, zero times five plus zero. And then in the second row, we're using now the second row, zero, one. So do zero, one times the first column, four, negative two. So zero times four is zero plus one times negative two is negative two. And then we do second row, second column, zero times negative three is zero plus one times five is five. And we simplify this, we get four plus zero is zero, negative three plus zero is negative three. 0 plus negative 2 is negative 2, 0 plus 5 is 5. Now take a look at this result here. This should look familiar. In fact, it's the same as the matrix that we have in here. It's the same as the second matrix. So the result is same as second matrix. And this is no coincidence. Anytime we have a matrix that looks like this with ones in the diagonal start, starting from top left to bottom right and then zeros everywhere else, we call this the identity matrix. And the identity matrix must be what we call a square matrix. So n by n, the number of rows and number of columns match. And we call it the identity matrix because when you multiply the identity matrix to any other matrix, you just get that matrix itself. So the identity matrix acts as the number one, where if you multiply a number one, where if you multiply any number by one, seven times one is just seven. Negative 13.5 times one is negative 13.5. So multiplication of one is the identity. And same thing here, when we multiply a matrix by the identity matrix, you just get out that matrix itself. So the general picture of the identity matrix is you have one in the top left and then one's going across the diagonal, dot, 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 ends with one over here, and then everything else is zeros. And it's a square matrix, so it means the number of rows and number of columns are the same and everywhere zero except for in that diagonal going from top left to bottom right. And this actually brings us, now that we have the identity, we can sort of do matrix division in a way. That's kind of the last operation. And it's not really dividing because when we do division in real numbers, we're actually doing a form of multiplication. We're doing a form of multiplication that gives us the identity one, the number one. So if you do a times a to the negative one, well, this is a times one over a, which gives you one. And so we say that a to the negative one is the inverse of a. Sometimes you call it the reciprocal of a, but we also call it the inverse because when you multiply these two numbers together, you get one. And so we can also find inverses of matrices. But instead of getting one when we multiply, we get the identity matrix when we do a times a inverse. So let's see this in an example. Let's say we have matrix A right here, which is five, three, two, one. And so we can do a inverse and we're going to have to use the matrix calculator in Desmos because it is a bit of a process to get a inverse. So let's create a new matrix. This is a two by two. So we already have all the dimensions good to go. And our matrix A is 5, 3, 2, and 1. Hit enter. So it saves that matrix. And then to do the inverse, we just type that matrix A. And there's a button down here that says A to the negative 1. We hit that button. And that gives us the inverse matrix, which is negative 1, 3, 2, negative 5. And we can check to see what happens when we do A times A inverse. Now, what we're really doing is we're doing 5, 3, 2, 1 times A inverse is negative 1, 3, 2, negative 5. And so when we do this multiplication, remember we multiply 
rows with columns. Let's see what happens here. This is equal to 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. 3 times 2 is 6. So negative 5 plus 6 is the first entry, first row, first column. And then we do 5 times 3 to get the first row, second column is 15. And then 3 times negative 5 plus negative 15. And then second row now, the row 2, 1 in the first matrix, we're multiplying that to the two columns in the second matrix. So 2, 1 times negative 1, 2. We have 2 times 2 is negative 2. Plus 1 times 2 is 2. And then we have 2 times 3 is 6. Plus 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. And so we simplify this out. Negative 5 plus 6 is 1. 15 plus negative 15 is 0, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, and 6 plus negative 5 is 1. And we get the identity matrix, which is amazing. So this is the identity matrix I. And we would get the same thing if we did A inverse times A. So if we are doing multiplication with the inverses and actually multiplications with the identity, that multiplication is commutative. So if you do A times A inverse versus A inverse times A, you're going to get the identity matrix no matter what. And so we can actually use, now that we have division, we can use the inverse, which is really sort of like the division, we can use inverses to solve algebraic equations of matrices. And so let's say we have this expression here. AX is equal to B. X is the unknown matrix. A we're going to use from above, and B is this new one we're given here, 5, 8. So we have A, which is 5, 3, 2, 1, times some matrix X, we don't know, I'm going to leave a space there, is equal to B. So this is 5, 8. Now remember with matrix multiplication, we have that this is a 2 by 2, and the result is a 2 by 1. And so remember, in order to do matrix multiplication, we need the number of columns of the first matrix to match the number of rows of the second matrix. So in order the words, those inner dimensions have to match. So this needs to be 2 by, now the result is a 2 by 1. So that means that the number of columns is 1 on this mystery matrix, because the result is always the outer dimensions, the 2 on the left and the one on the right. So from that, we can figure out that this missing matrix here is actually a two by one. And we would just use the variables X and Y to represent those missing entries, because there's two entries there. And so now we want to, just like algebra, we want to solve for the variable matrix, the X, Y. So we want to get rid of the five, three, two, one. Well, we talked about how to do division or how to get rid of, in a sense, matrices is with inverses. So we want to multiply by the inverse of the A matrix. And we already found what that inverse is. So let's multiply both sides of the equation by the inverse A. So we multiply on the left-hand side by inverse of A which was negative 1, 3, 2, negative 5. But remember that matrix multiplication is not commutative. So if we multiply on the left here, that's the action that we're doing, multiplying on the left. We have to do the same side multiplication on the other side of the equation. So we also have to multiply by this matrix on the left. So we're doing the matrix 5, 8 is going to be the matrix on the right, and then the inverse matrix, inverse A, is going to be on the left. So we have that, we have negative 1, 3, 2, negative 5, that inverse matrix times matrix B, which we had over here. So this is 5, 8. So just to keep in mind what we have here, we're starting with AX is equal to B. And now what we're doing here is we're doing A inverse times the AX is equal to A inverse times the B. And now what we found out previously is that A inverse times A is the identity matrix. So this is 1, 0, 0, 1. 
and we have x, y here, that variable matrix is equal to, and now we do the multiplication between these two matrices, we have negative one times five is negative five, plus three times eight is 24, so 24 minus five is 19. That's the first entry. And then two times five is 10, plus negative five times eight is negative 40. So negative 40 plus 10 is negative 30. And that's the result here. And what we actually have, remember, the identity matrix times any matrix is just that matrix itself. So this is like doing one times a number. So we have this is x, y is equal to 19 and negative 30. And so we can actually write out what the x and y exactly are going to be. If we have equations with matrices and we have this matrix is equal to this matrix, well then the entries must be equal to each other. So we have x is equal to 19 and y is equal to negative 30. And so writing out the steps that we did here, this one is we actually end up with the identity times x and this is equal to a inverse times b. And then the last step that we had here was just x is equal to a inverse times b. And so we can actually check our results because what we started with was ax is equal to b. We were looking for some matrix where you multiply it to a and you get this matrix 5, 8, the b matrix. So to check this, we do a, which is 5, 3, 2, 1, times this matrix that we just found, 19 and negative 30. And we're multiplying these together and we can actually check this in Desmos. So we have these two matrices here. A is the A matrix, the 5, 3, 2, 1. B, it's different than the B in our problem, but this is technically the X matrix, but there's no X button here. So this is the matrix 19, negative 30. That's the solution that we found. And if we do A times B, we end up getting 5, 8, which is the B matrix from our problem. And so indeed, this is equal to 5, 8. And so the check holds. And the most important result from this is the general way of solving for x here. To solve for x, when you have ax is equal to b, you essentially just do a inverse times b. And we can actually take this and use it to solve systems of equations. So if we take this example and we write the matrix equation as a system, we can do that with multiplication of the A and the X. So if we multiply the A matrix with the X matrix, let's see what we get. So we do five times X is five X plus three times Y is three Y. And then we do two times X is two X plus one times Y is one Y. And so this is the matrix of that product is equal to 5, 8. And like I mentioned earlier, if we have two matrices are equal to each other, and these are both two by one matrices, we can just set the components equal to each other. So this is saying that we have 5x plus 3y is equal to 5, and 2x plus y is equal to 8. Now we have a system of equations from the matrix equation. And so we can go back and forth between systems of equations and the matrix equation. And in fact, we actually got the solution of this was x is equal to 19 and y is equal to negative 30. And this goes both ways. We can go backwards from the matrix equation. We can go backwards from the system of equations, turn it into a matrix equation and get this matrix equation, which is helpful because we now know how to solve matrix equations using A inverse times B. And so we can set this up in an example. We have this system of equations. We can write it out as the coefficient matrix times the variable matrix is equal to the result matrix. So we have the coefficient matrix A is 1, 2 in the first row, because that's the first equation, that's the coefficient of x and the coefficient of y. And in the second row, we have the coefficient of x is two, the coefficient of y is one. And so this is the A matrix times the X matrix, so A and X, 
the x matrix or the variable matrix is x, y is equal to the result matrix, the 5, negative 2. And so we already talked about we can solve this by doing x is equal to a inverse times b. So we can just do xy is equal to a inverse, which is 1, 2, 2, 1 inverse times b, which is 5, negative 2. And now we can do this in Desmos. And so let's see in the Desmos matrix calculator. So we have the A and B matrix here, and we want to do A inverse times B. And we get that is negative 3, 4. So we have the variable matrix X, Y is equal to negative 3, 4. And we get that from just doing A inverse times B. And so what that means is that X is equal to negative 3, and Y is equal to 4. And if you want to check that, you can plug negative 3 into one of the equations and you should get y is 4. Or you can just plug both negative 3 and 4 into one of the equations and you should get some true expression like 5 is equal to 5 or negative 2 is equal to negative 2.